talking about model extraction. Uh, we're going to uh, cover AM to AM, AM to PM extraction, as well as neural network based extraction. Uh, we're here with myself, David Hall, marketing manager with National Instruments, and uh, Josh Moore, solutions architect with Applied Wave Research. Josh? Thanks, David. Um, do you have the clicker? So the reason we're talking about model extraction is that when you use a system level tool, one of the most important things is getting models of the devices that you're trying to simulate with. A lot of times for engineers, that can be a somewhat tedious task. You're presented with a data sheet, and the data sheet's full of information. It might have graphs, it might have tables, it might have just simple numbers, but you have to go read off all these numbers, and then you have to get the numbers somehow into your system level simulators. What we're really talking about today, or I'm sorry, before we start to dive into that, um, and there's all these different kinds of models that go with the data sheet metrics. So you have amplifiers, mixers, oscillators. Um, we have several different modeling techniques for each of these, and David and I are going to talk in more detail about them. Uh, the two in particular we'll be talking about are just nonlinear file based models, and then a more advanced technique, something that's relatively new called the time delayed neural network or a TDNN model. And then, of course, there's passive devices. These typically aren't as much of a problem because you can just use S parameters, but it's still something to consider. We need an easy way to get all the data straight into the system level tool. Really, the focus of our discussion today is going to be on making models for amplifiers, although this approach we're describing, where instead of taking the numbers from the data sheet and taking, instead of taking numbers from data sheets, just using measurements from hardware and plugging them directly into the system simulator, could really be expanded to account for all the models mentioned on the previous slides. What we're going to show today really focuses on something relatively straightforward, just AM to AM and AM to PM modeling, but it could definitely be expanded to include the harmonics, distortion, uh, noise levels, and also impedance mismatch, which is something the VSS system simulator is capable of taking care of. David's going to tell you a little bit more about how we actually do the model extraction in hardware, and then in the end, I'll come back and talk more about some of the more advanced modeling options we're looking at for the future. All right, so you're probably all familiar with the, the input and output response of uh, a non-linear device such as an amplifier. So you can kind of see the 1 dB compression. You can kind of see the compression curve, uh, theoretically linear response. And then, of course, um, the black line is the actual response uh, out of, of an amplifier uh, as it re reaches compression. So the idea first for AM to AM and AM to PM extraction is really being able to use an RF signal analyzer to capture this output. Uh, and so we effectively want to produce a linear input to the amplifier capture the nonlinear output, and then we'll use this to drive the, drive the modeling in VSS. Uh, so the way that we do that is with an RF signal generator and analyzer. Now, there's a lot of different m ways that you could theoretically represent or get that AM to AM and AM to PM response. Uh, what we found is that the easiest and most accurate way to do that is with a stepped kind of power versus time ramp signal. Now, this is inherently a CW-based approach, a continuous wave source stepped in power over time. And uh, you can imagine that there's a couple ways to do this. You could theoretically you know, have a signal generate one particular power level, slowly increase the power level of the signal generator. Uh, but it's actually far better to do this in a single waveform uh, because that prevents you from having to reuse various settings of the signal generator. Right? So every time you change the power of a signal generator, there's a slight error in power that you could potentially calibrate uh, but it's easier to calibrate at one setting and uh, use this ramp signal uh, by controlling the digital gain of the signal generator. So we input the signal generator, or input the ramp signal as a continuous wave signal. And then on the analysis side, we're simply going to acquire the I and Q signals. Now, uh, one important note is that capturing AM to AM can be done without any phase reference between a signal generator and analyzer. Power is an absolute measurement. Uh, that's pretty easy to do by looking at the I and Q signal. However, in order for us to look at the phase response of this particular device under test, we have to synchronize uh, the signal generator and analyzer by sharing a 10 megahertz clock. Now, the reason why we do that is because that's the only way to guarantee that the local oscillators of both the signal generator and signal analyzer aren't wandering versus each other in terms of phase. If they do that, we won't be able to accurately capture the phase response of the signal analyzer. Uh, by locking the reference clock, uh, we can guarantee that the channel-to-channel -channel phase skew between 
my signal generator and analyzer is basically the integrated phase noise of each instrument. So the better the phase noise, the better the phase reference between these two instruments. Uh, and uh, if you do this with a network analyzer, you're obviously using the same local oscillator, which is another mechanism to do this as well. Uh, once you get the I and Q data, um, we read that IQ data from our RF signal analyzer and do a ba some basic math computation to get both phase and magnitude. So you can see here uh, that where it says why I get a, I'm getting an array of complex data in LabVIEW. Uh, and there's a couple things that I can do with that. One, I can look at I and Q as the real and imaginary, or I can look at the magnitude and phase. Uh, the magnitude, which is my R versus time, is my AM to AM response. My phase, uh, which is, is my AM to PM response. Uh, now, of course, uh, to have the comparison between the input and output, we have to compare that output magnitude as a function of the input magnitude, which is the waveform that I've downloaded to my signal generator. Conversely, I need to take that phase response and look at that as a function of my input phase response, or sorry, my input power, uh, which is what gives me my AM to PM. Uh, from a math point of view, I mean, these are simple primitives in LabVIEW. Uh, if you were doing this in, in C or, or some other language, you could simply do power is 10 log of r squared over 2, theta is arctan of q over i, inversely r is, is the root of i squared plus q squared. Uh, but it's, they're all primitives in LabVIEW. From a measurement point of view, uh, the AM to AM response is not surprising at all. This is exactly what you would expect uh, from an amplifier at compression. Uh, the AM to PM response is a little interesting. You can see that at, in the linear region, the, out, the output phase is almost linear up until the point of compression. And then you can see a slight increase in phase. And then, of course, as I'm driving further into compression, uh, my phase decreases. So this is a very typical response of a nonlinear device. And this is the AM to PM response. So this is the crucial information that you would then feed into the VSS simulation tool to actually model the amplifier. Uh, so you can see the way that we would do that, uh, in LabVIEW, we automate the signal generator and analyzer. We get that information. Uh, you can see here's the file, standard file format that you would store that information. You can look at the left column is PN, the, the um, right column is output power, and then, of course, uh, the rightmost co column is output phase. Uh, all of this data fits very nicely into the VSS simulation tool, and we can uh, model it with the NLF. NL underscore F, which is nonlinear file based model block. Uh, this model block will take in information such as S parameters, AM to AM, AM to PM, harmonics. In this case, we're just using AM to AM and AM to PM. And of course, uh, that, when that block is set up in VSS, it simply points to the appropriate file, and that block will then behave like the whatever that AM to AM and AM to PM data represents, which is in this case an amplifier. Uh, one of the things that uh, I think we're, we continue to work on that it's, that's really important from an engineering point of view is to make sure that the model behavior is accurately able to represent the physical response of the actual part. So there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, one of the ways is to introduce a modulated signal to the real part and look at the output EVM or output ACP, adjacent channel power, uh, at a particular output power. Uh, that's one way to do it, because you can do that both in the simulation and in the real world. Uh, another way to do it is simply to compare uh, the 1 dB compression curves, as well as looking at third order distortion products in both the simulated and in the real world. Here you can see, uh, in the VSS environment, I've configured a virtual network analyzer to talk to this particular model below. Uh, that will allow me to look at things like my S parameters. In this case, S parameters aren't necessarily important. But I can also look at my AM to AM and AM to PM response. Not only can I match that to the data that I took with my instrumentation, but I can especially uh, compare things like my simulated 1 dB compression point with the data sheet of the device. If my measurement technique is correct, they should match very closely, which gives me a reasonable amount of confidence that the, my model is correct. So AM to AM and AM to PM is kind of one of the most basic forms of model extraction and device modeling. It's been around forever. Uh, it's fairly accurate, especially for, for narrow band signals. Uh, it's extremely accurate. Uh, but there are some limitations of the AM and AM and AM to PM response. Uh, so Josh is going to give us a little bit of, a, of an overview 
of modeling techniques for wider band modulated signals like TDNN. Oh, well, there's a missing slide from this. Um, so as David mentioned, the uh, AM to AM and AM to PM is an old technique. It's actually a really good technique, but it does have a couple limitations. Uh, it has really limited ability to account for frequency dependence. With a narrow band signal, not so much of an issue, but with a really wide band, multi-carrier wide band signal, that becomes more and more of a problem. It also can't account for nonlinear memory effects. And so that's where we're starting to look at new models, like the TDNN model. Um, that's time domain neural network. There was another slide that showed kind of a picture of how the model's formulated, but it's a neural network with some time delay elements in it to help account for both short-term and long-term nonlinear memory effects. That model can be trained very similarly. In other words, we can make a hardware system that generates a bunch of data, we feed it to the model to train it, and then much like the NLF model here shown can just be placed in VSS and pointed to a file, the TDNN model gets placed in VSS and pointed to a slightly different file. But the point is really just that we're working on new model types to account for wider bandwidth signals, modulated signals, nonlinear memory effects, all the things that we're seeing starting to be real issues for engineers designing um, signals and systems like this. So in conclusion, um, using some of these hardware-based simulation techniques, we think we're really coming up with ways to make it much, much easier to get your data into the system simulator. Instead of having to sit there and always type in data and read graphs off your data sheets, you should be able to put a device in a relatively straightforward single PXI chassis test setup, push a go button, and get the data extracted straight into the system simulator. Also, VSS supports a whole range of nonlinear models. We're not just limited to AM to AM and AM to PM. We have time delay neural networks. We have behavioral Volterra models, a variety of other things. So if you're ever working with VSS or you're interested in working with VSS and you have some particular model concerns or needs, absolutely let us know at AWR or National Instruments and we'll be happy to help you. Anything, Dan? Demonstration. Um, there's a demonstration? Oh, yes, there's a demonstration in our booth where we actually have everything up and running. We can show AM to AM, AM to PM, and TDNN, right? TDNN extraction. Thanks for reminding me. He's in marketing. Um, any questions?